Welcome back to Pemberton's Farm, Ballam Road Dairy Farming for episode 12 with me, Mr. Silly P. As I said during the last episode, I've got some um, some box muck, some manure that needs to be cleared and taken around to the midden. We're going to be doing that. You may notice, I don't know if you will, the uh, it looks, it's looking a little bit different. We'll I'll talk about that in a moment. I've been using the shear grab for... Um, grabbing some silage and the bucket a combination but also using the shear grab to grab bales and we make some more time with ration I'm going to grab another square bale and put it into the bale shredder and um, that's just to, to help out then I'm going to be moving some of the box muck out and I think what we're going to do we're whizzing out to field one and two I say whizzing out it's just over there um, and we're going to get soil samples done and then potentially we're going to be spreading slurry so we're going to be doing a bit of tanking and possibly some manure. It depends if we get through the slurry. I'm not sure how much we've got actually. There's probably a fair bit. Um, probably going to need a little bit more silage in that mix. So yeah, it may be looking a little bit different from your perspective. It's definitely looking a lot different from my perspective. Massive shout out to Gogglepop. Um, my Elgato may well be working again. Working properly. Um, it was that kind of thing, I kind of left it off, you know, I'm going to get some help. He just messaged out the blue and asked me some questions about it. He's been talking to DJ Goham and, and Driver53 and a few other guys about the problems I've been having. Um, so they wanted to know which one it was I had and then they, you know, went away and did a bit of looking up. Turns out there have been some issues with that particular, the particular one I've got. Um, and there were some things that need to be configured on the PlayStation, which I had originally done couple little tweaks weirdly and it's one of those strange things with with for some reason the PlayStation I don't know why um, it requiring things to be done in a specific order even down to plugging in the HDMI cables needs to be done in a specific order for it to work properly um, so when I went into my settings on my PlayStation there was a few things I had a weird thing the other day as well and I don't, I don't know why it's happened I don't know why it's doing it that my um, because I'm using a different mic now, I said I'd started off and I, my Rode mic that I never used on the PC I'm now using when I do my console recording. So I did my console recording, did, a, did one of the map tours I did the other day, went to edit it, no, no voice. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Went into the settings and the mic had been turned off. In the settings. No, I didn't go in and turn the mic settings off, so I didn't happen there. So anyway, so I went in, fiddling around on my settings. And I was looking at my screen resolution settings and various different things like that. And I normally have it set to 4K for recording. I've had it set to 4K for recording. It went on, it was on 1440. I thought, that's weird. So I reset it back to the 4K settings. And this is what's happened. To me, it seems a lot clearer. It doesn't seem as dark in the dark areas. Um, I don't know if you're finding that watching it. It's very odd. So potentially, with the Elgato now working, we're going to be able to do some more streaming. Which is great, which is what I said I wanted to do. Um, the other thing I was thinking of doing, I don't know if I do that over the weekend actually, I might pick up one of the days and stream like for a long period. Like I said before, the good thing with the Elgato, providing the, the Elgato doesn't play up, if for any reason the game crashes, the stream will continue. So the stream will carry on going, I can reset everything, come back on, and I don't lose the stream. Broadcasting from the PlayStation, unfortunately that happens, you know the stream the broadcast will stop and it starts a new broadcast which doesn't help so that's what i'm thinking but what i was also thinking of doing something a little bit different rather than maybe streaming on here i thought about bouncing back onto fruiling maybe doing a stream on fruiling playing a bit on there but then i thought what we could do is a kind of um again this is just this is just an idea at the moment this isn't a set in stone a kind of subscriber you remember like the books you used to be able to get i'll i'll, I'll find what they're called specifically um, where when you read through the book you had the, the options things so you got you turned to a page and it was like if you want you know to do this that and the other turn to page blah 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 if you want to do this that and the other almost like a poll I guess um, and sort of see where it takes us so when I'm streaming live we could we could even start off by deciding what map we're going to go on we could randomly go on a map we could start with the start equipment or not we could start with nothing or not we could you know and then because i'll be live streaming we can just you know ask the audience you know what do you want me to do 
what job do you want me to do first between this, this and this? And I don't know. Um, I thought there might be, you know, I could stream for five, six, seven hours that day. I'm not, I'm not doing a 24 hour one. That's a bit bonkers, but it was just an idea. Um, like I say, whether it will happen this weekend or not, I'm not too sure. It also depends on, you know, what's happening within the household and that kind of thing. It's the same stuff I said before. It's, you know, I've a busy household, a lot of people, a lot of stuff going on. So it's not always that straightforward. Um, I'm recording this bit Friday morning. Um, Friday afternoon, I've got a load of stuff to do. We've got to pop to the vets for a couple of things to do with Farm Dog. Um, and then we've got some prior engagements and commitments. So any, if any mods come, we didn't have mods Wednesday or Thursday, if any mods drop or any maps, which is generally speaking what happens, um, then potentially I won't be able to get onto those till Saturday morning, but I can get onto them, so that's good. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take the trailer, I'm going to fill the trailer up, so that takes 15,000 litres. The muck that's around the back of here, around the back of the old good shed, I'm going to load up. So we're going to start off tanking, I think. So we'll do the um, soil sampling, we'll get that done first, we'll check on the fields. I should probably should have left that at that angle. And then um, we'll tank. If we run out of slurry, then we'll switch over to um, to box muck. But we don't have um, a muck spreader, so that would be something the Pembertons would have to um, have to look at leasing. There's not much I can do on my farm. I said about chickens, which I'm going to do at some. I'm going to do it at some point. Um, We'll see sort of where we end up going with that. And obviously there's no contracts available because of the time of year either. So as far as me contracting and doing stuff on my own farm, I'm waiting for a crop to grow. There's not really much I can do on mine. But because there's work to be done here, I crack on with it. Which is nice. I think what I might do is come at this at a different angle. Because I don't want to push this manure through the wall of the building. Which I might have already done and not be able to get to it. So if I come at it from this angle, that might work a little bit better. So, yeah, I'll see you in a bit when I've cleared a bit of this up. There we go, it's better. Isn't it? And, uh, yeah, we'll get the other bits done, get a bit of tanking done. I'm trying to think, did I do slurry spreading on... I didn't do any on... I did manure spreading on silver run, didn't I, I think. It's weird how the bucket doesn't always want to fill up. Anyway. Yeah, so, oh, good news all round. Um, I'm just sort of getting my head around the streaming, setting it all up as well, so um, I'm sure I'll be asking for the guy's help. <laughs> I've got I've got a vague recollection of how I did it before, but it's one of those things, you know, if you don't do something regularly, you know, you can have a list of instructions, and if you're doing it day in, day out, two, three times a week, however often you're doing it, it just becomes second nature. When you don't do it for a long period of time, it just goes out your head completely. I have to say, if this is transferring across to the to recording, I'm liking this. I don't know how or why the settings changed that I originally had and it's weird, it must have happened either gradually or I just hadn't really noticed. I don't know. The muck has moved. Has moved. I have moved. Um, we've put the straw bay, the bedding in. Where did I put it in? The new shed. That load of TMR has gone in. I've got more to do but They'll get done. So, we're going to cross over. One and two, get the uh, soil sampling done. It's going to get open. You know what I had all actually forgotten about? The greenhouse. This is a, uh, it's a standard one. That's only going to require water. We've got the water tank, haven't we? We can get some more produce for the farm, uh, the farm shop. Lettuce or tomatoes, I, mean, I could do strawberries, I suppose, but we need strawberries on silver run, so I reckon tomatoes. We'll get some tomatoes for the farm shop. Why not? Let's close that for the time being. 
let's get the soil sampling done. So, if we come over to the field and have a look. So, we are on this field here. That could explain why we took a bit of a hit as well, because the economic uh, score on the Pemberton's farm overall is at 43. So that's why we took a bit of a hit when we sold the milk. So, uh, what do I want to do? Purchase soil information. Wowzers, okay. Uh, that's not my money. <laughs> Uh, let's do that one as well. Um, that one. Uh, purchase soil information. Okay. Loamy sand. pH levels not great. Do I lime them? I mean, it's grass that's in there. Yeah, yield's not great at all. So. Should I lime? That's the thing. I mean, grass fields, I don't, I don't generally bother. I mean, saying pH value okay and nitrogen okay, I don't see how it can be. Whether we just kind of ignore the pH level for the time being and just get the uh, nitrogen level up. Yeah, let's get, let's get some tanking done. What I'm going to do then, I'm going to go and grab... Actually, I'm going to grab the little Hurleyman. Going to go and get the water tank. And let's get this greenhouse going. Yeah. And then we'll grab the tanker. So, water tank. While we're over there, we can have a look at the sheep. I say have a look at them, not just go and, just go and stare at sheep. That was a weird film. Does anyone remember that film? George Clooney, who else was it? Men Who Stare at Goats? That was a peculiar film. Thomas is going to need refilling. How are they looking for wool? We've got a full pallet. We've used almost a, well, I've used a full bale. We're on to the second one. How have we got? Roughly 5,550. Doesn't hurt to top it out, does it? I have to be careful using this that I don't back down too far. And then the little Hurleyman can't put it back out again, so... Let's do that. Uh, there we go. Fill it up. We'll get that taken over. Ooh, we've got a bit of wheel slip. Not, not too bad, but a little bit. Right. Problem I think I'm going to have. <laughs> Same problem I have, I've had all everywhere around the farm um, is getting in. That gate doesn't open a particularly helpful way in for the greenhouse. So and it's not a particularly big area to move around in either. So we'll have a look. I also realised the tanker that the Pemberton's bought, the milk tanker that we used in the last episode. Um, there's a, th a three axle version of that like this with a swivel front axle because the one I got when we hooked up to this and we hooked up to the telehandler tipped them both up um, I'm pretty sure the tankers themselves are the same size you can get different capacities to them but the actual physical size of them is the same so I'm wondering whether or not to speak to the Pemberton see if if the manufacturer would take it back um, or the company they bought it from and swap it over for a triple axle instead because that will mean more vehicles will be able to move that around the yard um, rather than just the big Hurleyman which would make life a little bit easier yeah. so that gate could either do with opening that way into that space I'm, am I going to get through there? I don't know if I am you know If I do, am I going to turn around again? Can we get through? I don't think we can. Around the back for this. There we go. Let's get that in.
Oh, there we go. Uh, tomatoes. Excellent, let's get tomatoes growing. Get that closed up. And can I turn round? That's the question. Can I get round here? Probably not. I don't know, maybe we will. End up in next door's pond. That'd be nice. <laughs> Now, am I likely to need more water here than the sheep are going to require? Because I could leave the tank here, couldn't I, for the time being? You know, I think I might. We'll leave it there and then it's out of the way. And if we need it, we can always come back and get it going. Right. Close the gate there. Right, now we've got to work out where we get the slurry from. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure, between the new shed and the old good shed is where the slurry points are for those two. The others I'm not sure about, but the, I'm pretty sure the slurry tanker, it's not a massive capacity, it's not, it was never going to be, but... Now, do I, um, I... I don't need to. I was going to say, do I put on double application rate? I don't need to. As long as it's on automatic... Oh. Right, let's look that up. So what we are, no values detective, detected. Application rate, 0, 0.0 metres cubed. At the moment, yes, on auto. We'll leave it on auto for the time being. So the question is... Now, normally... say normally... The slurry tank is here and they pump from... Because what normally happens is they scrape. There's gr there's grates here as well which aren't on here. But they scrape this out into these grates here which goes into the big sort of... There's a tank here. And when they built all the new shed, there's pipe work that runs now to, into that. And they scrape from into these as well. And these all go into the same sort of pit here underneath. And they pump into that to fill that up. But then when they fill up the tanker, they have filled up from here before, but generally speaking, the pipe just goes into the tank here and they just take it all out of there. And then that gradually goes down. That's got a fantastic a bubbling system they had put in because it used to crust over on the top and they used to have grass and stuff growing on it. And the bubbling system can be set to come on at different times of day or be on all the time or whatever you want to do. That just keeps it all moving, stops it crossing over and it keeps it all, um, rather than having all the thick stuff set uh, uh, in one place and the th uh, thin watery stuff, it keeps it mixed a bit better. That's the theory anyway. So, question is, I want to say about here, there we go, that will do. I'm sure there's one trigger here and one just over there. I think where that little grate is probably. 13,000 litres, we're going to get through this quite quickly, I think. Oh, she's heavy. Oh. This element's struggling to pull it. That's worrying. Let's open that up. One of the th things, I, th I think I mentioned it when I might have been one of the map tour, I'm trying to think that Tom Pemberton had saved up for himself and paid for himself when they bought the, uh, the tank, uh, the tanker, he paid for that. And we, he really, really wanted a dribble bar. And when they first got it, they just had the splash plate. Then they got the dribble bar. Obviously, this, like I said, this is not the combination they've got. It's not far off, look-wise. But, um, yeah, and it, they, they love it. So, let's turn that on. It was on. Is it actually putting anything down there? Oh yeah, it is, you can see the sheen, look. That lovely slurry sheen you get. When Giants manage to get to a point where FS is not only VR, but also smell-o-vision. 
at these little machines that pump out the odours. Odours of the farm. How cool would that be? Oh, I don't know, we might get a fair bit round. It depends, like I say, just how much we've got in the tanks, in the slurry pit. It was a fair bit, I think. I, I could go and have a look, actually. Probably should have had a look. Box muck and tanking. Well, we, we might not even get onto box muck. If we get both these fields done without having to worry about it, if we just use the slurry, that's actually fantastic. It's probably a good time to do it. Snow is still due. I think around one o'clock it's supposed to be coming. Um, so without the ground being too frozen or not being able to do this, we'll get it done now. I don't know what to do about the lime situation. I might, I might leave the lime this time. It will improve it slightly. We should get a better yield than we did last time, but I don't know. There you go. You can see a bit better now, can't you? Actually, no, it's quite a big field, isn't it? <laughs> and the field next door, number two, that's twice the size. So, yeah, we may end up having to get on to using that. But that's the whole point. That's what it's there for. You know, the cows are producing it all year long. And when it gets to the point they need to use it, you use it. Fertiliser prices being what they are and all that. As you can imagine, I've got quite a bit of this to do. What I'll do next time I go, when this empties and I go over to refill it, we'll um, have a look and see how much is in the tanks. Actually, we can probably do it now, can't we? If I just stop for a second to turn it off. If we go into here, go to our animals. What we're we looking at. Oh yeah, blimey, look, we're all right. So on the new cattle shed, on the right hand side, slurry, 65,236 litres. On the side shed, which has got the young uns in, there's 22,500. In the old good shed, which we only put cattle in um, yesterday, December, we did, didn't we? Yeah, uh, there's 12,920. So we got a fair bit. We, we're looking at, what I say that was, 12... 22, so we're looking at 34, 60, yeah, so we're looking at nearly 100,000 litres. Um, that's like, whether that will get us through both fields? I don't know, we'll see. But there's plenty there. I don't think the pastures produce it. I'm sorry, I'm going to stop again, sorry. Um, where were we? Where's our, the pastures, the cow pastures? Well, there's nothing in them at the moment, are there? But so we took all the animals out. But I'm pretty sure the pastures don't. Do they? You still get milk, but you don't get slurry or uh, or manure. Right then.
I'm on the home stretch on field two. I'm not going to lie. I, I think I might have got the, the time wrong. I thought the snow was due at one o'clock. It may have been 11 o'clock it was due because about quarter to 11 it started. We had a few little flurries and now it's probably coming down. Um, the beauty as well with the precision farmer, which is something I've forgotten about as well, is like now, because you've got like the row control, kind of row shut off, unlike when you're paying normally if you're fertiliser spreading, muck spreading, whatever it might be, that it will keep spreading. But with the precision farming on, because it's already registered here, because it's an automatic application rate, that it's got what it needs, I can leave it running and it kind of cuts off the sections so it's not applying at the moment whereas normally it would be pouring slurry out all over the place but it's not doing that now I've got to be honest as well I didn't use anywhere near as much as I thought I was going to I think I'm on load 5 so 5 lots to 13,000 litres and this one won't even be a complete load either which is brilliant so yeah the snow came it's, it's, it's properly honking down now whether it's going to settle or not I don't know oh the money's gone down because um, the Pembertons decided they wanted to have the um, soil sampling done on field 21 as well. So if we go to there, so field 21 has been done. Now, here's the other thing as well. Now, I'm I'm no expert with the precision farming. I have did videos on it when it came out. I haven't played it for a long time in precision farming, but the, the, the thing not to get caught out by is looking to the right at the nitrogen levels and it goes up to green and thinking, I need it to be in the green. You don't need it to be in the green. It will be at the right level it needs to for the particular crop. So once your crop is in the ground, then you do your nitrogen. And it matches the nitrogen to the crop. So for grass, whilst that looks... You're thinking, well, that's still orange. That's, you know, some places bordering on dark orange. That's nowhere near enough. Surely it's got to be closer in the green. The same with the pH level. But the thing is, if I get out now and go to a bit we've done, nitrogen, good. In areas it's coming up nitrogen perfect, there you go, nitrogen perfect. The pH value is okay, not awful. So whilst on the other screen it's, it's oranges and dark oranges, and you look and think, that's awful, it needs to be green. If you get out and check with the, with the um, field info on, on, and it will show you there, it's perfect. The nitrogen we're putting down is perfect for grass, it doesn't need to be any more than that. Um, so yeah, we, we're good. So I've just got this last little bit to finish. Then I'm going to go inside in the warm, put my feet up, have a cup of coffee. And just about see where we went before. Just about. There we go. Field 21 has still got grass on it. I haven't cleared the grass off there. Um, Heavy Metal Gaming did win right for me when he came on and did the baling, um, but we haven't collected it. We've still got plenty of um, silage in the clamps. There is another silage clamp actually over at the, um, the, the where we've got the beef cattle on the other side of the road, the other side of the Ballam Road. So we could pick it up. Um, I might do it with a forage harvester maybe. Um, yeah, we could do it. I'm just thinking. The other thing I'm thinking as well, if, if because this is one of those maps, because there's a lot of grass fields, there's a lot of grass work, a lot of the contracts are baling focused yeah we'll say that they are baling focused there are other contracts and I've picked up some other ones as we get into spring we should get more of them pop up but I'm thinking when I said about being a contractor with my own farm maybe looking towards getting my own baler my own mowing rig maybe even I don't think I have enough money to save up to get a, a big M or something like that but then when baling contracts come up I can use my own gear and not have to pay um, to, to borrow the farmer stuff. That's another option we could go down looking at that. But um, I have to say, that's that done. We didn't have to dip into the, the, the box muck. We didn't have to dip into that. We've got loads of slurry left over. We, like I said, I may go up, I don't know, we may slurry field 21 if I get the grass off it. I mean, I, I could technically, as it stands at the moment, I could go and, no, what do I do that for? I'm going to leave that on. That's what we disconnect. Lower the implant. Fastest loss. There we go. Do I turn it on? There we go. Um, yeah, I could go and I could slurry spread on field 21 now with the grass still on the field because that is a 
that's a drag hose, um, a drip feeder, it's not a cultivator. So those little things there, those discs, they just put a slice that the nitrogen then goes into out of these dribble bars. Um, it's not a cultivator, so I could, and it won't make a difference, but you wouldn't go over the grass swaths you've got to do that. That's probably not a good idea. Um, something I put on, actually, I'm gonna, just while we finish off, while I finish, is we're going to whiz through to have a look at the uh, milk shack. Well, we took the raw milk in the last episode. Now, I, I put it on the video as um, a bit of text because what I was fully aware of and something that I, I think a few people did comment on a couple of direct messages. So even though I put it on the screen, I don't, I'm not sure that people either read it or paid attention. But in regard, it doesn't matter. The fridges that are in there that you can place, you can place directly in there. So I had them placed outside. I took them in which is a real game getting them in there because it's like I said on multiplayer you can't pick things up it's not allowing me to pick things up um, but when I came back onto the game they were back out here where I'd originally placed them oh that's weird I'm not sure it's supposed to do that so what you can do you can place them inside with these double doors open when you originally place them you can place them inside but the problem I've had because of where I placed this because I've placed it so close to here I can get around the back and it does come up if I've got the info uh, panel top left help window open with pick up objects and that kind of thing I can't unbox them if this was placed further out from the wall if it was in the middle of a not in the middle of a field but you know what I mean if, if I had room all the way around it I could probably from outside the wall unbox them but because of where I've placed it I can't um, so as it stands at the moment, and I'm being very honest about this, I, I was just in, uh, thinking I'm just going to leave that door shut. When we bring raw milk out, we know the trigger's here. It's not really going to be too much of a problem. Um, the trigger will still work, but as you can see, they're still boxed. Um, I have tried a few different ways around, and I did spend about half an hour or so around the back of here bouncing around all over the place trying to get it to work but yeah so I just thought I'd say that because I know some people say oh you do know you can put it inside I, yeah I know I, I don't, do know you can and I did do that um, but like I say the reason I hadn't originally done it was because I, I couldn't get to the triggers so just sort of point that out um, yeah I've got no contracts for me to do um, Pemberton's ongoing is going to be yeah total mix ration I'm really surprised because I thought that when you put your total mix ration in for your animals I'm trying to think what versions of the game it used to be. It was that if you put if you feed in, that would last 10 days. Then it changed to 6, didn't it? Or did it go from 6 to 10? Whichever way around it was, it would last for 6 days. Um, we went from December to January. Now, December, we got all the stuff together, made Tomix ration, and while I was off doing my cultivating, the Pembertons topped up the Tomix ration in one day which I've got it on one day months at the moment um, it used half of it so but then that could be yeah I'm just thinking is that with seasons on and precision farming I don't know like I say um, so we're going to, have to keep on top of that but that being said we are done for this episode like I said I'm going to go and put my feet up get in the warm I'm, I'm going to speak to him about that because if it is if the other one, the triple axle, so double axle there with an axle at the front, a swivel axle at the front, if that tanker is exactly the same size, just with three axles, that's going to be way better because then we'll be able to move it around with anything. It doesn't matter what we pull it with. We could probably even pull it with the little um, scraper tractor if we needed to. Um, so, yeah, maybe that'll be an option moving forward. But that's a decision for the Pembertons to make. It's above my pay grade. I'll see you in the next one. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.